In the last video, I mentioned a book called Mindware by Andy Clark, an introduction to the philosophy of cognitive science. I thought I should look into this a bit because I often have a bit of a laugh at the so-called scientific story of cognition, about how we are supposed to be individuals here, perceiving an external object out there. It doesn't add up. Everything gets turned into electricity through our senses and then we construct the whole subjective experience of the phenomenal universe out of electrical signals. It's a bit of a non sequitur to put it mildly. And they seem to me, just from reading the introduction, I might persevere with the book a bit more. But the very premise on which it is based is flawed. And it, it seems to me that what people like Andy Clark are doing is trying to replace the obvious with an explanation of the obvious. This is what philosophers do. They replace the obvious with explanations of the obvious. And the thing about explanations of the obvious is they get very complicated and very convoluted. So the, the foremost assumption of Andy Clark, as he stated in the introduction, is that everything is material. But that's a very ropey basis on which to begin. It's referring back to some Newtonian type of physical understanding that everything is matter, that the world is like a machine. We can explain things in terms of basic physical interactions. But the physicists are having a lot of trouble with matter. In fact, physicists tend to explain things in very non-physical terms. They much prefer talking about forces and energy. They have a lot of trouble coming up with theories of matter and actually finding matter. There's a lot of matter missing in the universe, apparently. So matter is very problematical. And, and yet the cognitive scientists seem determined to base their theories upon it. So the obvious fact is there's consciousness. If there wasn't consciousness, then the cognitive scientists or the cognitive or the philosophers of cognitive science couldn't even talk about it. They seem to want to ignore, they are determined to ignore the prime fact of their own consciousness. It's so curious, isn't it? I'm conscious, but I'm going to put that aside and I'm going to come up with an explanation based on matter on why I'm conscious. It's quite absurd. It's, 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 it's incredibly absurd. But let's carry on with chapter 31. The object arises in this subject but has no independent existence. Object and subject here are put in apostrophe marks. The object arises in the subject but has no independent subject. The subject is consciousness. And the object is the notion that, we, that arises. For example, a notion of materiality, of a material world. That notion of a material world has no independent existence from consciousness. We can hypothesize that there can be a world without any consciousness. But that hypothesis has arisen in consciousness. Stop dismissing consciousness. Stop overlooking consciousness. We like to try, we like to remove consciousness and pretend that the world is inanimate, inert, and by some peculiar fluke, conscious beings have arisen in it. And that's what we relate to, rather than relating to the fact of our own consciousness. Very strange thing to do. It's like somebody 
chucking money at you and you chucking it away and going on about how poor you are and how you've got to go out there and work hard to earn a living. Money's being chucked at you all the time and you're going like that. But I need to go out and work, and work for a living. I need to go and earn some money. And you've got all this money ch being chucked at you and you're chucking it all away. I, I, I really need to earn some money. <laughs> this is what it's like. On it goes. This is samsara. This is the cycle. It goes on and on and on. Hence, even the conditioned state or being is but a notion. It is not real. Therefore, it vanishes when inquired into. It is best to reject the notion and stop it from arising again by never thinking of it again. If we keep getting told that material world is, the material world is real, that matter is real, then we get sucked into that notion. I'm not even going to argue against the notion of matter. It just doesn't add up when you look into it. It's so absurd. The, the physicists are finding this out. What we, should be, what we should be doing is rejecting this pseudo-scientific tendency to tell us that our consciousness is some kind of fluke and that the reality is of an inert world which we are walking around in. Why should we want to do that? It's basically not true. And a complete violation of our being. So let's just drop it. There is neither the subject, seer, nor an experiencer. Neither the real nor the unreal. It's all notions. Drop them and then there is the supreme peace alone. One who is established in this peace is free from likes and dislikes, though engaged in activity. Or he may not engage himself in activity. Whatever. There's no shoulds or shouldn'ts. When the mind is freed of all notions that limit the unconditioned consciousness, how does the sage act in a dualistic way? Free from love, hate and fear, he exists as the immutable self, firmly established in the supreme peace. So free from love, hate and fear. So this love and hate are obviously two sides of the same coin. They're both driven by fear. But when you're free from all that, there's only unconditional friendliness, unconditional acceptance. The notion of object which arises in the subject is then experienced by the latter as different from it. So we, we tend to think whatever notion we've got is somehow different from our own consciousness or just consciousness. In fact, the two, like the dreamer and the wakeful person, are indistinguishably one, like milk that is kept in two cups. It's an interesting one, isn't it? Milk in two cups. You've got, you pour some milk from a carton into two cups. Is that milk different from this milk? Is this consciousness here different from that consciousness there? The Supreme Self is free from all notions. Notions give rise to objects, and when the notions are abandoned, the objects cease to be. Abandon our attachment to these notions. <laughs>